So welcome to the final part of uh, the series that I've been doing about the Dread Elf Army book. Uh, this part is going to be focused on the Destroyers and the Menagerie. So the Destroyers, uh, that includes the Hunting Chariots and the Repeater Batteries, and you can have up to 15% of your army in these. And the Menagerie, that's basically all the monsters. Uh, that also includes the mounts from your character section. Um, but in addition, it's the, the Kraken, the Hydra and the uh, Leviathan. So I'm mostly going to be talking about those. Uh, yeah, let's get started with the uh, destroyers. So we'll, let's start with the first pick of these, which is the hunting chariot. Uh, the hunting chariot is kind of the same as it used to be in the previous book. Um, it's a piece that combines being a chariot and being able to shoot with a harpoon. Uh, so this weapon has a range of 18 inches, it's always had a range of 18 inches, so not much has changed there. It still has one shot, it still hits normally in a 3+. plus. However, um, it doesn't have accurate uh, anymore, and uh, quick to fire, it kept quick to fire, I believe it used to be accurate. Um, also it used to be strength 7, instead of strength 6, yet it only had AP 3, I believe, with lethal strike. And it also used to do D3 wounds. Um, so, in a sense, it stayed kind of the same. Um, the only difference, um, well, the only differences to this unit is that the crew, they now have Ruthal Insufficiency instead of Killer Instinct. And also that it lost the Accurate. Yeah, and obviously the Strength and AP. Um, yeah, what do I think of this choice? Um, generally, well, it's a 200 point chariot with resilience 4 with a 5 of armor save. That is bad. Um, that is that is not <laughs> that good. I mean, you can get a wolf chariot with the same resilience and armor. Okay, that only has 3 wounds instead of 4. Uh, but these are about 90 points. 120 for the first one and then 90 for extra ones, I believe. Something like that. So they're about half the price of this one. Uh, so, in order to get a, a harpoon on this on this uh, mount, you're paying like 100 points. 100 points, yeah, for a harpoon that can only shoot up to 18 inches. Um, that has only strength six now. Um, only D3 wounds, not even clipped wings, not D3 plus one wounds. I think it's a really hard sell. Um, I mean. As a chariot, it can still threaten a little bit, but it can only threaten chaff, basically, because otherwise you're not using it. Because um, you only have D6 impact hits, which is kind of dicey, then you have only two attacks from the crew. Uh, they're gonna strike at offensive 4 with lightning reflexes, so they'll likely still hit on a 2+, plus or 3+. plus. They're gonna hit at strength 4 on the charge with plus 1 to wound, so strength 5 effectively, that is not too bad. But you're looking at two attacks here, um, and then you have just four hit points with, with resilience four. Uh, for me, as a chariot, this doesn't really work. I think maybe it's also um, that the march rate could be higher. Um, I mean, the highborn elves, they, they also have the reaver chariots, and they have a march rate of 14 inches, I believe, and I think that would immensely help already on this uh, model. Uh, just give it light troops, um, just give it a march rate of 14 inches, and you have a piece that can suddenly um, locate itself a bit better with regards to the harpoon, and also act as a chaff piece if you really want to. Um, I mean, 200 points is not too bad for a chaff piece nowadays in an elven army. Um, yeah, and the ability of the harpoon, I mean, you hit on a 3+, plus, yet you don't have any... Um, accurate anymore, so you're gonna likely hit on a 4+, plus because you don't really want to be within 9 inches of your target. So hitting on a 4+, plus with strength 6, if you're gonna shoot up against anything with resilience 5, it's already uh, 3 up to wound instead of a 2 up. Um, there's quite a lot of resilience 5 targets that you would like to be wounding with this one, so the step down from strength 7 is, is kind of heartfelt. AP10 against monsters doesn't really matter versus AP0. So then maybe the the incentive here would be to go for cowboys. And Dreadoffs doesn't have too many dedicated tools to deal with cowboys, uh, even though Shieldbreaker is immense on any Dreadoff character because of the plus one to wound also. 
Um, and your high offensive skill, high agility. So Shieldbreaker is a really good weapon for Dread Elves, I think. However, yeah, something like this, I mean, you're still going to do only multiple wounds D3. If you calculate it out, like against the Barbarian Chief um, on a Shadow Chaser with a 1-up armor save, if you have three of these guys, you're going to hit on 4+. plus. So you will be hitting, if you have three of those, you'll be hitting with 1.5. Uh, you're going to wound a Barbarian Chief on a 2+, plus, so that would be a little bit more than one uh, wound. Okay, sure, you have AP10, you have multiple wounds, D3, so you'll on average do like two wounds to the guy, and the guy will just charge one of your hunting chariots, kill it off, go to the next one. You uh, have to have some more damage output. Even if you have three of those in the field, it's and it still doesn't do it for me. Um, I mean, you could also charge with them, but then again, on the charge, they are all not good. Uh, to me, this is just a choice that uh, it takes the negative part of being a glass cannon, which is being extremely vulnerable to any range damage and any anything that comes close to them, and to combine it with a damage output that is just... You, you can weather it as an opponent. It, it's not too bad. Um, you can just take the gamble and then, yeah... If the if it really goes bad for you, yeah, then sure it goes bad. But if I were to play against three of those and I had some uh, single models in my army, I would just march them up, uh, put pressure on the hunting chariots, just hope that they don't all hit, and then uh, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm definitely not my favorite pick. <laughs> now we continue with the repeater battery. So the repeater battery is uh, way better in my opinion. Um, so, this used to be a war machine that was static, now it's a war machine that can move and shoot. So this is the first war machine in the game that is actually able to move and shoot. There's been a lot of discussion about this uh, on the forums, um, with people saying that it's overpowered because, well, you can move and shoot. And you combine that with a 3 plus 2 hit and then it's amazing. Well, it is amazing until you put it on the table. Um, until you put three of them on the table, basically. Uh, because if you have one of them, I think one of them is, is the, the golden rule. It's going to be the golden rule for the new Dread Elves. Um, because it's effectively a piece that very effectively um, removes chaff from your opponent. Uh, so you have eight shots, which is quite a lot. Uh, you hit on a three plus, which is nice, if you don't have to move, and you can shoot at short range. So that's within 12 inches. If you're going to have to move, or if you have to shoot at long range, it's going to be on 4 plus 2 hit. Um, which means that your 8 shots, you're going to hit 4 times probably. Strength 5, AP2, against Chaff, you're going to kill 3 to 4 models. Um, and these models are not going to be useful anymore. And in terms of self-defense, that is also quite fine, because then you have 2 Chaff models left. They can charge you, you are going to strike probably first with your crew with 2 attacks with agility 5, with plus 1 to wound, uh, no AP, but you'll likely just uh, knock off one of these uh, Chaff models. And then the opponent Chaff is going to struggle to take your war machine down. So that is that is a good thing, um, I think, that, that makes it work in a front line. Um, however, uh, you only have a range of 24 inches, so you're going to struggle with the range. Um, so in your deployment, you are going to incorporate it in your battle line, in your front line of your army, um, giving your opponent uh, very nice charges on the flanks of your unit through the war machine if he's able to. Um, so what I mean by that is you can just charge your war machine and then uh, turn in, pivot in at the last moment um, to... Uh, face the side of your the flank of, of one of your combat units and then if he gets an overrun suddenly his front is now in the flank of your uh, combat unit so he can get a flank charge uh, coming from the front of your unit in the st at the start of the turn really uh, so that that really makes it uh, yeah, it's very, very difficult to play with these uh, embedded in your front line um, but yeah stuff like uh, a dwarven organ gun or an empire Hellblast or Volleygun, they have the same issues that they, they face, um, which is why I never played Hellblast or Volleygun. Um, but with the repeater battery, at least you can correct it uh, with the advance of 5 inches, so I think that is a really good uh, part of the model. 
It's also a really reliable artillery weapon in the sense that it cannot misfire. Um, so I think there's going to be quite some armies that are jealous of this this piece of uh, engineering. However, you should not discount the fact that it doesn't provide you with any uh, any artillery in the army that has a range of higher than 24 inches. And effectively, in the first turn of the game, you have a, a 29 inch range because you can move up and shoot. However, if you're facing artillery of the enemy, then you're going to have no way to deal with enemy artillery. Um, the front line of the enemy is going to be uh, at the at the edge of his deployment zone, likely. Um, so you're probably you're not going to much uh, bulk up your repeater battery to be in range of the opponent's artillery and then shoot at his artillery because then you will be threatened by his army all over. Um, yeah, so... All in all, I think it's a really good incorporation into a Dreadoff army just to get rid of uh, chaff and, and small units and, and stuff that you really don't want to engage in combat like Plague Disciples. Um, however, including three of them really clogs up your battle line, so that might only be viable with the highly mobile lists, maybe. Uh, yeah, these have been neutered a little bit. Luckily, they, they come from the destroyers category and not from the Raiders category, because that would be really detrimental to the army. Then we will move on with the Menagerie. So the first entry here will be the Kraken. Uh, the Kraken was also in the previous book, uh, so it is kind of similar with just uh, Advanced 6, March 12, uh, 5 wounds, Resilience 5, uh, Armor 3, still, this still distracting in our target 1. Um, it used to have five attacks, I believe. Now it has only four, so that is a little bit of a downside now. Um, you still have the strength seven. You used to have AP four. You got an AP three here. Um, but now, right now, it got hatred against large and gigantic, gigantic, and it still has the multiple wounds D three. So the multiple wounds D three is here to stay. Um, and it became a little bit more reliable against large and gigantic models um, whilst sacrificing a single attack. It's a little bit of a shame that uh, the Beast Breakers, they give something devastating charge hatred if it's harnessed, which the Kraken is, um, because it already has hatred against large and gigantic, so that's the preferred target of the model. However, just the reliability of having hatred against these threats is, is immense. Um, I, Previously, I didn't play the, the, high, the Kraken at all, just because I didn't trust the five attacks that it had, because you're going to likely only hit two of them, um, and if you, the dice are not favoring you, you're going to hit like two or one, and then on the strength seven, you're going to miss one of these, um, especially against something with resilient six. So then my vision was always that the Kraken would not... Um, Will not be reliable, reliable enough to deal with monsters. Um, yeah, then the coastal predator rule. That is, uh, I think it's an interesting rule, uh, provided that we don't have so much water terrain on the on the maps. Uh, so you gain devastating charge plus two advance on a hard target one. So you end up with hard target two if you are uh, inside a water terrain feature. Devastating charge plus two advance brings you up to eight inches with swift strike because you're a beast. Um, and that makes you compete against a lot of monsters. You can zone a lot with that. Um, I think it's, it's really cool. Um, and also against characters, it's going to work quite well. Um, just because of, well, the four attacks, you can likely hit on a four plus against characters with offensive five, maybe even a three plus. You're gonna have your hatred, um, so you're gonna get a guaranteed two, two, three, uh, strength seven AP three hits. On big mounts, a lot of stuff doesn't have uh, that much armor, so the AP three is okay. And even if it has um, a lot of armor, AP three still gets you some places. Um, yeah, I think it's it's really cool. Um, it's a really dedicated model now. Um, it can still cope quite okay against uh, infantry just through its Strength 7 Thunderstorm. Um, but then if you're going to run this and if you want to have it a bit as a more flexible piece, I would definitely include some Beastmasters um, 
in your army uh, just to get this maximized stomp against infantry because it is really a shame <laughs> if you run up against infantry you just roll a one for your thunder stomp and you're gonna get broken uh, by the same infantry um, yeah so there's still the option to increase the base size to 100 by 150 millimeters which is immense um, you gain two additional lash, well, lash masters uh, that doesn't really change the profile too much so it's mostly just an aesthetic um, just for modeling purposes if you have a big kraken model and you really want to put it on the table that you're able to um, because uh, well making your face bigger is always a bad thing so I think it's a really interesting choice now uh, to include in your army. Um, it certainly has a role to play uh, and still against the targets uh, that it's not suited towards um, with a Beastmaster within 12 inches. Um, it's going to be incredibly useful. Then we go to the more generic uh, monster choice, which is going to be the Hydra. So the Hydra used to be the anti-infantry tool. Um, and it used to be also quite decent against monsters uh, because of the strength 4 breath attack and I'm really sad to see the strength on the breath attack drop down 1. Uh, you would say that it doesn't really make too much of a difference when strength on your breath attack uh, but this is just the extra wound that you're doing to a giant or um, something else with resilience 4. And yeah my experience this it, it really made a difference um, it really made a difference between losing by one or winning a combat by one. Um, however, so the Hydra, it still has uh, uh, Resilience 3, still has Armor 3, or Resilience 5, Armor 3, sorry. It used to have 5 wounds, I believe. It now has 6, so it did get an extra wound. Um, and the Fortitude went down to a 5-up instead of a 4-up. However, you get the cut one off rule, uh, which is a really nice fluffy rule. For each successful fort fortitude save roll of a natural 6, the model disregards another simultaneously suffered wound. Um, that is basically the rule, and then if there aren't enough simultaneously suffered wounds to disregard, the model immediately recovers one health point instead. So, for example, you have a Hydra left on 1 HP, you're gonna deal three wounds to it, um, and you're gonna roll two sixes on your fortitude save, and the other roll is gonna be your four. So you would take one wound with one of your sixes on your fortitude save, you can disregard one of those, and with the other six you can heal one of your wounds, uh, getting back to two wounds on your Hydra instead of one. Um, this is combined with Rage. Uh, so Rage we already saw previously on Giant, Forever, for every health point lost, you gain plus one attack. When you gain the health point, it suffers minus one attack value. So that is to, to counterbalance the uh, the fortitude um, health regeneration uh, mechanic that you cannot end up with a Hydra with 20 attacks. Uh, yeah, so it used to have seven attack standard and now it only has five. Um, however, if you have taken two wounds, you are at the old um, damage output level. Uh, except for the breath weapon, which used to be strength 4 AP1, I believe. So against infantry with AP2, it's kind of the same. Um, against cavalry, it might be a bit better even. Um, however, against monsters, it's now uh, definitely worse. It did, however, gain poison attacks, uh, so that does help it a little bit against monsters. But then, yeah, I, d I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a really good deal uh, for 400 points. It has a little bit of a, uh, of a immunity to range damage uh, through the fortitude save. So whilst other monsters might suffer uh, from bolt or fire, the Hydra also suffers but a little bit less because of the fortitude 5 up. Um, and the only, only sad thing I, I see in the profile is that um, if you are gonna uh, suffer a, a hit with multiple wounds that you don't recover the multiple wounds also so if you were to save a region save from a bolt thrower hit doing d3 wounds normally uh, you don't get to to grow back d3 wounds on your hydra so <laughs> i would say that that would be quite cool uh, just to uh, 
uh, demotivate people from shooting with a ball thrower against your Hydra. Um, yeah, I think this is still just a general purpose uh, tool that it used to be. However, against monsters, it's uh, it's a little bit less potent. Um, and I like the fact that they made Fortitude 5 up instead of 4 up, because uh, it isn't enabled them to give it an extra wound so that you um, are less um, dependent on, on what kind of uh, magic your opponent brings. Like if, you, if your opponent brings alchemy magic, it just turns off your uh, Fortitude save. Pyromancy also turns off your Fortitude save. And that makes the Hydra quite a bit more vulnerable. Um, and yeah, for the, for the price you pay, it's really an interesting piece. Um, so imagine this, that uh, you have like something like a uh, a hero on a, on a mount um, for 400 points. You're going to get something like a griffin or so. Uh, you're going to be more expensive than 400 points, actually. Uh, but in terms of damage output, you're going to be comparable to a Hydra, if not on the lower side against infantry, because the Hydra is gigantic and has a thunderstorm. I think the 400 points is a really good deal for something with a 4-up armor save, with a 5-up fortitude save, 6 wounds and all the uh, the extra stuff that it has. Yeah, so definitely a, a good spot. Um, it used to have, however, offensive and defensive 5, it went to 4. Yeah, so these elite units are no longer hitting them on 3+, plus. however, you did get poison in return, so uh, it's a little bit of a toss-up probably. Um, I did, however, really, really like the offensive-defensive 5, <laughs> and I probably saved my ass a couple of times. Then the last one we're going to discuss in this video is going to be the Mist Leviathan. Uh, so the Mist Leviathan is a new monster in the book. And yeah, this one has been debated all over for a long time. Um, so, fluff-wise, I believe, <laughs> so the, the, the initial conception of the Mistle Viton um, was described as one of these transport things from Oblivion or Morrowind or one of these video games. Um, so basically like a jellyfish, very big jellyfish that you use as a transport. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, which makes it fly and the ground movement is horrible. Fluff-wise, I think this thing is in a really bad spot um, just because of the, uh, the army guidelines. Um, so the army guidelines for Dread Elves, they do state that you're not allowed to have any um, form of ranged protection in the army, you're not allowed to have um, any abilities that give you vanguard in a bubble, that give you uh, distracting in a bubble, that give the beast itself, or um, hard target I mean, that give the beast itself hard target. I don't think so because you already have the crack on the flat. Um, you're not allowed to decrease the range of enemy weapons. Um, you're not, there's a lot of constraints on this thing. Um, so also through playtesting, we tested a couple of iterations of it. And one of the first ones was to use it as a transport from which you could ambush with a unit. Uh, the concept was interesting. However, it led to so many abuses and, and rule shenanigans um, that well, if, basically, if you get to deploy out of ambush at any point in the game, in a um, in any uh, deployment uh, pr um, profile um, or any formation that you like, then you're gonna be able to to screw out the game immensely. Um, so you can suddenly use one of your dread legionnaire units as chaff. Uh, extending 15 bases from the Miss Leviathan to some direction, just propping out in the middle of combat. So that was that was not really good. <laughs> I also think that Nine Days should never uh, try to include any form of transport in the battlefield. Um, I think I, I would hope that it's going to stay a 40k thing, because just swooping in into the battlefield in a fantasy setting, I don't think that should be. Uh, in there. So in the end they came up with this one. Um, it's a really cheap monster. 
Uh, they wanted something that, that is for sure through the development. They wanted something that um, can be a centerpiece on your army, so the big base is, is going to stay. Um, and also something that is not too expensive, not too impactful, um, but still has some kind of charm. And apparently Miss Leviathan is the title that it has to have. <laughs> so, whatever is behind us is behind us. Let's go through the uh, uh, the stats. So this entry is, is kind of a weird beast in the uh, Dread Elf Army book because it has eight hit points. Um, so that is incredible for any monster. I think the only other one in the game currently is the Arachnorok spider, the uh, well, giant spider, I don't know. Um, so it has eight hit points with resilience five. However, it has zero armor and also not a fortitude save, not a um, not an Aegis save, just no armor at all. However, it does have distracting. So distracting uh, helps a little bit against shooting, doesn't help however against magic. However, is anyone going to be willing to to notch off eight hit points of this model uh, just with magic? I don't think so because it's. It's not that of that interesting of a threat to to focus your fire on, I think, because offensively it only has two d three attacks, which is going to be on average four attacks, uh, just like the kraken. The kraken had a bit of a uh, of an upside to it uh, with a strength of seven, offensive four, and hatred against gigantic and large. This one doesn't. <laughs> so this one just has uh, four attacks on average, offensive three, strength four. With, however, AP3. So AP3 is really interesting here, um, making it a really good choice against uh, against cavalry. Whilst normally um, beasts struggle a bit against cavalry, so I think this is a, a bit of an interesting design pick. Um, I don't think it's needed um, because you kind of take away the weakness of the mole. Uh, because against uh, infantry, well, strength 4, AP3, Thunderstorm is still interesting. Um, so you're not going to shy away probably, and you have sufficient wounds to just uh, grind out a couple of turns. Against cavalry, um, you would run into <laughs> very big issues if you didn't have AP3. And against other monsters, you are going to struggle uh, because of the, uh, the strength 4 only. Um, yeah, and then you have four Lash Masters that uh, add a little bit of combat power. Then the special rule under the cover of Mists. So the first part of this rule is not that consequential. It's um, that you can decide who chooses the deployment zone if you have a tie for the deployment role. Otherwise, at the start of the owner's first player turn, friendly infantry units within 8 inches set their march rate to 14 inches. Um, so they used to be uh, ruled in the sense that they got plus four on their march rate, and then it was really interesting to combine it with a banner of speed for a first turn, a 16 inch march, and a turn after for academy trained units of a seven inch charge range plus 2d6. That really helps you. Um, however, I think the change of to 14 inches does cripple the choice a little bit. If they do so, they lose march and shoot. Um, so you get an extra four inches on your advance in the first turn with um, with your infantry, which is a good boon. Um, however, whether that is the only reason you should take this, um, it's I think it's a combination of just having a eight hit points monster uh, with resilience uh, five for two hundred sixty five points that can fly, that can chaff, that can and some war machines that can do some work um, and the bonus of uh, of having your infantry advance a little bit faster. So in the end I think this choice right now is quite interesting. I don't know if this is what the designers wanted um, from the get-go um, but I think it's 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 starting to grow on me. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, with that, we have completed the entire book, uh, so I hope you enjoyed these videos, um, and then in the future I'll be back again with some different content.